Yeah, it's me, Scotty. Columbus, Ohio. Hello? Um, uh, nothing much. Uh, I uh, saw, I watched uh, a Young Serps video about Jamo Green, uh, the f- former uh, Fox uh, Q- Fox News contributor, the one who, uh, the, when they asked about whether or not the primary was rigged, she said that it was a gotcha question. Mm. Yeah, she said. She also was in another debate, and she said that part of the reason we lost was because of, uh, we didn't know how to deal with intersectionality. And I just thought <laughs> to myself, like, wow, like these people, they're, they're dangerous. I've said this over and over again, but one thing that really struck me about the whole primary, the Democratic uh, primary, was how social and racial justice was in a sense being separated from economic justice by like the Hillary uh, people and people like Jim Green and Charles Lowe. And what they were doing, they were undercutting that whole entire message saying because Bernie seemed tone deaf when he was talking about race or whatever. And, and this is where I kind of felt a little bit suspicious of what the, um, the Black Lives Matter protests, like, I know the mm-hmm. first one was Black Lives Matter at the Nevers Nation. The second one was the, um, the, um, agitators on this Seattle. So I was kind of like, okay, something just doesn't smell like with the whole thing of how these people are talking about, like, they sound so woke when it comes to social justice, but they have nothing really to say about economic justice. And they're like, it's like a, a reverse Southern strategy. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I mean, I picked up on a little, uh, it was a little hard to hear them, but, um, you know, I heard about um, <clears throat> their excuse and, and, the, and the way they felt like um, last night they were saying that the reason we lost was because we were intersectional enough and that we need to focus on identity politics even more despite it blowing up in the face of uh, in, in our faces in the general election. Um, so you, you have people who are who are true believers of this type of politics. And uh, go ahead. No, 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 finish up, please. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, the true believers, and, and don't, go, don't get me wrong, I think everybody in this room um, in, in, on the show tonight, we all understand the necessity and the value of, of identity <laughs> politics and intersectionality. Uh, but it's when you, you go for intersectionality and identity politics only and, and without any regard to any other intersection besides your race or your gender or your sexual orientation, um, you know, that's when you have, uh, you, you, you're not truly intersectional and you leave out a lot of Americans. And, and then the, and the technique that they use of silencing other people based on this type of politics blew up in their face and they, and they can't let it go. And, and it just shows you that, you know, as much as we have to focus on Trump you know, we, we still have to do both and we got to work internally to to either get rid of the people or help reform. Some of these people need some. Uh, uh, what's that, what, what is it called when they send you to jail and they a rehabilitation? Some of these some of these Democratic leaders need rehabilitation or we just need to purge them out of the out of the get them, get them out of the way uh, because they genuinely either believe this or they're just going for one last hoorah to see if they can how far they can get with this type of politics. Go ahead, Brandon. Go ahead, Brandon. So, so I don't know. I don't know if they're true believers. And this is something that I we hear all the time from people on the left, whether they be far left or moderate left or whatever, that the Democrats need to perform this autopsy. They have to look into why they lost in 2016. And they have to, you know, hold the people who were responsible, well, accountable. And they're the frustration by people who are seeing them not doing this. And they're wondering how they could be so stupid. Or so inept that they're just going to keep pounding this this shallow identity politics, you know, pounding this mick liberalism, pounding this mick feminism, pounding this mick anti racist. It must be a better word for that, but I whatever. Uh, and I don't think they're stupid, right? I just think that they recognize the problem, they see what it would take to solve it, and it's simply not something they're willing to do. And so these retreats with yeah. Barack, with Rahm Emanuel, this money to third way, because like what? Because heck, come on, come on, guys. With 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 twenty dollars, 
you know, like a, a six pack, we could tell, we could lay out in one page why Hillary Clinton <laughs> lost, and like, it would only need to be one page and bullet notes. It could be like, the black, 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 done. But the because but the answer is not hard. It's just untenable to Democrats, to liberals. It's untenable to the Democratic establishment, and what because the problem is them. They they're <clears throat> the ones who are getting in their own way, and. Yeah. You know, it becomes a question of, well, how do you explain to a dinosaur that it's extinct? Like, how do you get someone to voluntarily cede power? And the answer is you can't. And that's why people like Chuck Schumer and Ann Fulsey have to go because they because they 100% understand the problem. And I would say, heck, trying to convince people that you don't understand the problem is a good way to extend your shelf life. Because, like, hey, don't worry. I might get it oh, yeah. one day. I might get it one day, guys. On the yeah, other hand... Good. On the other hand, I see your point, Ben, and here's what I would say to you, like, that point. We have to understand that their version of intersectionality comes from the bubble that they live within. And the mm-hmm. Democratic the Democratic Party, I would say better than Republicans, are able to live with this illusion of diversity, this illusion that they're having a diverse conversation and engaging with a myriad of interests and points of view simply by nature that they have more black people, they elevate more women, yeah. they elevate more LGBTQ people, they elevate more brown people, et cetera, et cetera, you know, more Muslims. But what they don't ever do is recognize that no matter what color the person they elevated is, no matter what their orientation or their gender, they're all always rich or well-to-do or yeah. elitist. And so they can they have this ascriptive conversation, ascriptive in the sense that they all belong to a very horizontal slice of society, and that's the class slice. They, they're all very rich. And so they sit there and they try to figure out what oppression looks like. They have these conversations about what oppression looks like, but these conversations are incredibly vapid because what never gets said, and this is not only the Democratic Party, but this is between Democrats and Republicans, what never gets said between them is, well, hey, what about people who don't have as much money as us? Because, Mm -hmm. you know, part, part, one of the key, Key barriers to intersectionality. I know I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I'll let you guys go in a second. One of the key Not barriers. You sound so we smart. Have a call. You, you do yeah. sound so smart, though. <laughs> no, but one of the key barriers to intersectionality is something called standpoint theory. And what that basically means is that you can't ask someone who's in second place what the problem with society is because they will be able to identify all the reasons why they're not in first place. But with mm. the whole way that we do meritocracy is that they won't be able to see that them being in second place and not being in first is just as specious as someone being in third and not being in second. And so mm. it comes down to Democrats who are, you know, black or or black or female or LGBTQ are very good at <laughs> recognizing are very good at recognizing why they can't be number 1, but they aren't good at recognizing why the poor people can't be number 2. <laughs> and so and that's the problem we have and, and brandon and, whatever man whatever brandon brandon i'm gonna cut you off I'm, cut you off. I'm, 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 reading, I'm, reading, I'm reading in the chat room we have uh, calls Nar- Nar- we'll get the call i just had to, i gotta read this one comment okay go ahead. Slayer. it said brandon please check your vocab you young handsome asshole <laughs> what did i say <laughs> 